I've been thinking about how to convert this into a portable ba rechargeable battery for my camera because right now I'm running this camera off of a 6 volt battery and I have these plugs plugged into the uh, battery inputs inside of this Samsung WB100. I'm going to be making a bigger video about that but I'm trying to figure out hmm, how to fit everything into that and maybe what kind of features I want to have because it would be interesting if I could turn that into a a portable universal power supply but I, don't, I wouldn't want to do that because there, there'd be a chance that I could feed too much voltage into this camera and break it and that'd be $130 down the drain so I don't know I think what I'll do is I might put a, uh, a switch on the side and I'll put two banana plugs and I may just connect a little box to there like a little project box like like this and I'll get one, one of those uh, LED voltmeters and put it on there and maybe hook it in there I don't know though it would be nice to hook it up in here if there, if only there wasn't a circuit board underneath there because if this was just hollow I could cut out that and put it in there but if I wanted to put, put a, uh, something there I'd have to cut out the circuit board unless I did it like that yeah, that's awesome. Two banana plugs, a voltmeter, and a switch. That would be awesome. Then I could just have a little, like, 9-pin D-sub port right there, and it would plug right in there. And we'd Velcro or something like that. Okay, that's that's probably what I'll do. And don't worry, I'm still collecting car batteries. Speaking of car batteries, I just recently went to Rural King and picked this one up. It is brand new, basically. It was in the the recycling skid because evidently it was reading 12.6 volts and had 12 cranking cold cranking amps that's what the label says and it it definitely has more than that it's been char I had it charging for a day and a half and then I took it off and a day later it's still at 13 volts that's a brand new battery and it was made November of last year so that's gonna be great for my arc furnace and also I've been having a lot of trouble with the front post batteries because it's hard to hook alligator clips to it for jumper cables and then I discovered these these are awesome they are little units that let you convert your front post terminal batteries into top ter uh, terminal batteries like for instance we have the, the plus one right here this screws in like that isn't that just awesome? That is so cool. Now I won't have to worry about clamping it on there. Plenty of connection space. And plenty of power too. This thing should have seven or 800 cold cranking amps. That's gonna really vaporize some graphite electrodes. That's for sure. Oh boy, this this light I built definitely does sap the, those lithium batteries. Uh, just from like a month or so, or actually, you know, just a couple weeks, it's already down to pretty much empty. To where now, whenever I pull power from it, the voltage goes down to 3.4 volts, and it starts to flicker really bad. So let's do a discharge test and see how much capacity... Uh, I mean, let's do a discharge test and get the capacity all the way down, and then as we charge it, we'll see how much capacity we have from zero. I guess I might, I might want to also work on my my caving helmet because I haven't charged that since, since September. That's been like, what, five or six months? And I never even really balanced the cells. I just slapped them together and charged them. So they're probably terribly out of balance. We've taken 3,600 milliamp hours or 3.6 amp, amp hours of current out of it. The voltage has gone down to 3.55 volts, so let's go to charge now. I charged it at 1 amp. Now the good thing is, it actually doesn't take, or oh, I'm charging at 5 amps, sorry. The good thing is it actually doesn't take 5 amps, it only takes like 1.3 amps because this thing, it steps up the, uh, it, it steps down the voltage so it steps up the amperage. As we can see, the voltage is going up. So the big flashlight battery 
turns out to have almost 6 amp hours of capacity. It's not very good, but oh well, it's still useful. And this thing's already set and go for another couple weeks of use. I've probably gotten about 4 or 5 hours of light out of it. It's not bad at all. I'm experimenting with how to run AC motors for like building a variable frequency drive and stuff. And I'm curious if it can run off of pulse DC current. And so this is my 1918 Tungar Mercury Arc Rectifier battery charger. And it produces 60 hertz of pulsed DC current. And I'm curious if it can make this motor spin. But I don't know. Let's try it out. We're going to see what voltage the settings are right now. Try it. Here's another test for the, my AC motor VFD project. With I'm just I'm tapping the motor with 24 volts of current. Okay, so here's my thought process. It occurred to me that a commutator for a DC motor is basically just a VFD, it's a mechanical VFD. So I wonder if I, if, if I were to get like something like an, 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 an industrial three-phase motor for my electric car project, would I have to build a VFD or could I just build it a commutator? So I would have the, the voltage, uh, the power input to the, to the motor coming in, hooked up to the commutator, and then the commutator would switch it so it, uh, it would go through the commutator and go back into the motor, like so. But the commutator would switch it into, would turn it into the phase. And the phase would change depending on how fast it was going. So it would start out, it would inch forward, and, and it would change the phase, change the phase until it kept sp speeding up. It might take a lot of amps. But I think the main issue that I'm having with this motor is this, is, this was made in like 1926 or whatever, and it has a very weird way of starting. It's like a fast start method where it speeds up, or I mean, it has a weird winding to where it speeds up really fast, and then it like flings out a governor arm inside of it, and then it changes its own wiring, I think. Uh, so I think I might want to actually work on a newer motor. I have, I have a bunch of motors in my shed. I have several that have blown up too, I could try to rewire. But like here, I'll show you. It, at, at low speed, it, it has a weird sound, and then it flings out, you, you can hear it flip the lever, and then it, it just works at regular like a regular AC motor then whenever it slows and whenever I take off the power it sl uh, slows down and then you can hear the lever flip back in see hear that 
So maybe I should I should get I should start try to build a I I should try to work with the motor that's not so old and odd. <laughs> or in the end, I could just hook the commutator to a smaller motor, a smaller like 12 volt motor, and have that make generating the frequency. But still, that would beat buying a several hundred dollar VFD just so I could run a motor. Because I mean, if I don't have to, I don't want to. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching. See ya!